Hey everybody, today we're going to be recreating this cinematic in Black Ops 4 using theater mode. To follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need some editing software. In my case, I'm using Sony Vegas Pro, but any video software that allows you to edit or modify clips will do. Also, if you've never used theater mode before, be sure to check out my previous tutorial which goes through all the basics. Okay, so I'm in theater mode now and here is the clip that we're going to want to create a cinematic from. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch to director mode and place a dolly cam somewhere high above the player. Then I think I'm going to move forward in time a little bit and place the camera close to the back of the player. I also record all my footage in 0.1 speed and I'll explain why later in the video but it's basically just to provide more control over the clips once they're rendered. Now what I want to do here is follow behind the player for a little bit just before the shot is fired. So I'll let the footage play a little bit more and place another dolly cam. Now this leads us to one of the biggest problems you're going to have when you're placing dolly cams in theater mode. Treyarch seem to have opted for a spline based interpolation between the keyframes. So while this keeps the movement between each dolly camera smooth, it also introduces this phenomenon of overshooting as a sort of compensation mechanism. So if we play this footage now with the three cameras placed, you'll see that the sequence between the second and third camera is completely unusable because it has completely overshot its mark. So how do we go about fixing this? So the key thing here to recognize is that the first camera is causing the second and third camera to overshoot. So what we need to do is actually delete the third camera for now and then just record footage from the first and second camera. Then we can delete the first camera and just record footage from the second and third camera. Then using video editing software we can actually merge these two clips together and create one smooth sequence. So now, right now I'm going to delete the third camera I'm just going to record the footage of the first and second camera. What I want to do now is delete the first camera as that was causing the overshoot from the cameras 2 and 3. Now my start point will be camera 2 which has been renamed camera 1 now because we just deleted it. So now when we place that additional camera we won't get that overshoot. This is going to end up being the main bones of the tutorial, basically deleting previous cameras whenever there's an overshoot. Okay, so after the shot has been fired, I want to follow the bullet and then pan around the enemy. From what we've seen previously, we can assume that when we try and do this, that the camera is going to overshoot. So to prevent this, we can delete the first camera in the chain, but before we delete anything, we're going to want to capture this footage where the cameras are following the character behind. Okay, so now I can move forward in time and just follow the bullet. I'll place the camera in this position here and then I'll aim to pan around the character. Once again, we've got to be wary that the camera will want to overshoot if we try and do this. So you want to capture this footage and then delete the first camera. Now we can pan around this character, and because I know the cameras are going to be relatively equally spaced apart, I can place a few cameras here without worrying about overshooting. What I like to do in this instance is place a camera where I think the footage should end, and then place some additional cameras in between just to smooth out the pan. So taking a bird's eye view here of the pan, you can see it's very smooth, and this is where kind of the spline system comes into play. If you can imagine if Treyarch went for a kind of linear system, you'd have straight points between these cameras and it would be very difficult actually to get a smooth curve that the cameras could follow. So that looks pretty good so far, I'm just going to place one last camera that follows my character as she runs past the body. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out and I'm going to render this. Now I should have four clips that I need to trim and then merge together to create a smooth cinematic. Now before I leave theater mode, I want to capture just one more piece of footage, which will be the camera locked to my player's face as she's running. So to get this effect, you can use a neat little trick in basic mode. So what you want to do is go into third person mode and use the analog joysticks to get the camera in this sort of position. Now when we unpause the footage, the camera is locked in that position and it creates a very nice cinematic look. 
Okay, so before we actually head into editing our footage, we want to do some pre-processing in an application called Virtual Dub. Because our footage was captured at 0.1 speed, we need to bring this up to 100% and we're going to do that using this software. Basically what you want to do here is load all your footage in, then change the frame rate to 600 frames per second, and then export it as a .avi file. So now we can actually head into Sony Vegas and merge all these clips together. So import all your footage and just make sure that the frame rate is set to 60 frames per second. So what I'm going to do here is show you how to merge the first two clips seamlessly and then the process is exactly the same for the rest of them so you should be able to do it on your own after that. Drag in the first and second clip and then on the first clip which should be the one from up above from behind what you want to do is find the point where the camera actually starts moving and then trim to that and use it as your start point. Then what you want to do is actually go to the end of that clip and then try and identify when the camera stops moving. After we've trimmed that first clip, we can move on to the second clip and try and identify where the camera starts moving in that one. Now when we append the second clip to the first clip, we should get a seamless transition between the clips. What I like to do as well is add a velocity envelope to these clips, so this can help a lot with the flow of the cinematic. So because we use virtual dub to bring everything up to 600 frames per second, if we set the velocity of a clip to 10%, that's basically our 0.1 speed, the lowest speed we can go. And if we set the velocity of the clip to 100%, that's normal speed. So using virtual dub in this way you can get a very intuitive sense of the timing of the clips. Okay, so when you've done that with all the rest of the clips, you can then add some embellishments like a cinematic bar and some color correction. And also for the start of this clip, I've stuck in that third person fixed camera view that looks pretty cool. Okay, so that brings us to pretty much the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you'll find this way of making cinematics very useful and it should enable you to get over some of the inherent problems in theater mode due to the spline based system that they use. Thanks for watching.